It's not quite as dark as the black, so I think maybe that was a success. Hey, this is Dave from Bay Stencil. I want to put this picture on that wall. The only problem is that I've only got white paint and black paint. So how are we going to do that? Let's find out. So we're actually going to paint two um, different things. We're going to paint Wonder Woman here, who's in multicolors. I've actually got a five layer stencil of her. And we're also going to paint this uh, police call box, which is a three layer stencil. And we're going to basically solve the same problem with both of these two stencils. That is, we've got a wall that could be any color, and we've just got two cans of paint with us, black and white. First thing I'm going to do to get started is use this reference image to label the colors that each of these layers should be just for reference so that we know what we're painting when we're painting it. Okay, so I got my stencil uh, layers here labeled according to the um, colors in the diagram or in the original picture. Uh, black, red, blue, flesh. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but it's got some kind of pink and some um, pink and yellow, pink and yellow green tones in it. And then finally the white layer, which is a surrounding layer, which also comes into the image. Uh, and on this other one here, I have uh, the white layer, the red layer, and the black layer for the call box. Uh, on both of these, I kind of want to respect the idea that we don't want to make a postcard out of this thing, so we don't want to use this white layer to frame in the outside. We might want to use it to make the letters that say telephone, um, and that for the Wonder Woman stencil, we don't want to use, again, we don't want a postcard, so we're not going to use that layer to trace around the outside, but we may use it for a few effects, uh, and you'll see what I mean. I'm going to start with Wonder Woman just on the wall as we see it here and show you how we can um, we can approximate the, the stencil here with just the black and gray can, uh, black and white cans. I tend to place the darkest uh, layer first because it's usually the one that has the easiest to see detail in it. I'm going to go ahead for this first layer, dial up the pressure all the way to 10. And that's going to simulate just covering this whole stencil, um, covering this thing in as dark a layer as I can. That's the darkest layer, that's the black, and that's what it's meant for. I'm also going to hit this so that I can register the other layers easily without having to um, uh, strain my eyes. I've got a few bridges I'm going to fix. I'm going to dial the pressure way down, use that black can again. Okay, so what am I going to do for red and blue? What I'm going to do for red and blue is I'm going to use um, just a lighter uh, touch with that black can so that the coverage is not nearly as uh, dark. And then for the, um, for the flesh layer, uh, I'm going to use a very light, light touch of white, which is going to be a little bit lighter than this, uh, than this background color here. And then I'm going to use the white stencil and do uh, hard white on just a very little bit of the internal part of the stencil, and you'll see how that works. Um, so the toughest part here is going to be differentiating the red and the blue. The good thing is there's not so much blue, and I think I should be able to just make that look a little bit different by the way I spray it. And we'll, uh, let's figure out how that, how that works. Okay, so you see how I get just a very slight, uh, very light layer of the red. I'm going to do the same thing with the blue, and I'm just going to maybe see if I can darken it just a little bit compared to the way the red worked. But notice I definitely have two tones here, and your, your eye is kind of imagining or bringing in that, um, bringing in that red layer. So what I hope is, because I used a different cap and a different um, uh, painting style, that the blue looks a little bit different from the red. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. So this, does that look any different from that? Well, it's a little bit lighter, and maybe it looks a little bit different. Yeah, actually, it's not a little bit lighter, it's a little bit darker. So this is a little bit darker than this red area here. So it's not quite as dark as the black, so I think maybe that was a success.
So I stopped to take a picture here because I actually like it pretty much as it is. Um, I want to continue though because I want to see what happens as I add these other layers here and add in a little bit of white. So, so far I've only added black, uh, shades of black, that is different pressures of black to this uh, canvas which is uh, very light um, and we're going to see what happens if I add that white in. I think it's going to pop a little bit but I also think it's going to look a little bit garish compared to the way it looks now. I like the way it looks now. Let's, um, let's see what ha happens when I add these extra layers. I can't say I honestly like it better than what we had before but um, I think it does add some detail. Uh, notice that it adds some, uh, we're gonna see some uh, brightener, uh, we're gonna see a brighter area around the face here when we add the final white and we see a little bit of uh, shadowing that's happening here. I do, the, 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 the gaps bother me here because they make her skin look cracked. So I'm gonna fix those up with a feather duster. Notice that I'm still just using white. Probably what I really wanted here was even a lighter coating than this. So if I could have uh, used a smaller cap and just gotten the nice smooth spray, I, used the, um, I had used the chisel um, on this. If I had been able to use uh, a cap that delivered less volume for the, uh, for the pressure, I would have. But now, since I'm gonna go for all white at the final layer, I'm not gonna hold anything back. I'm just gonna let it go with the white. Remember, this is actually empty space here. This is the hip and the leg, and this is empty space, so I don't wanna hit that. Okay, let's see what we got. And notice that in spite of the fact that we use this, uh, that we use the postcard stencil, we use the white stencil, we didn't use the edges of the white stencil, so we should have a nice clean, clean outline there. Okay, so I like this okay. Um, I think that I liked it just as well without this extra white in it. But if you really want it to pop, if you really want a high contrast between dark and light, um, this works. I, I like it mostly when we get when I get some of the surface color into the stencil. I didn't do that here, um, and I want to try it one more time where I do get the surface color into the stencil. I'll do that by making a big area of, uh, of light and then seeing how that goes. I'll do that really fast. Okay, so here's my big smart reveal. My big smart reveal is that black, red, and blue should be painted. The flesh color should be left out because it's like the color of the wall. And then the white should be a very light dusting of white um, over the existing layer. Um, let's try that. Let's try that super fast and see how it works. So I definitely did the second one faster. I didn't register it as carefully. Actually, I didn't use the registration marks at all. Um, and the top one pops a little bit, but it looks a little bit wheat pasty to me. So if I only have black and uh, white cans, I wanna use the white a little more sparingly than I did. That said, I think I left uh, out a little bit of the detail on the lower one, in spite of the fact that I didn't, I didn't cover the bridges as well. I didn't spend as much time doing that either. But I like the lower one better, primarily because uh, I get this, um, I get the color of the wall coming into the stencil and I really like that effect. So um, I'm gonna vote for the second one and I just would have taken a little bit more time on it to register it correctly and to uh, fill in the bridges a little bit more. But I think they're both pretty successful. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna take a totally different color and show how you could do this on either a, maybe a totally white wall or a totally black wall and still get everything uh, coming out okay.
Okay, so you see what I've done here so far. I actually chose, not, instead of doing the black layer right away, I chose to do the red, uh, a red layer or a reddish layer. That is a red layer with some, uh, some kind of junk sprayed on it um, to make it so that it's not so uniform a red and it's not so bright a red. Um, but what I did is I added the black layer, then the blue layer. Uh, I'm sorry, then I left out the red layer. Then I put in the blue layer. Then I did the, quote, flesh layer. Um, very, very light dusting of white. And now I've got the lightest layer, the white layer. And I actually see something here that I kind of want to preserve. That is the very dark shadows in the face here. I kind of see this in this stencil. And um, because I see it here, I kind of like the look of it. And I think that on the red layer, it will, it will be nice if I can reproduce a little bit of that after I remove this. But let's take it off first and see what it looks like. that one but let's just do it totally on black so that's going to force us to use only the white can but we're still going to have all the stencils we need to make this a credible um, uh, credible wonder woman okay see this time i started with the postcard and i'm actually going to come in and i'm going to fill that in with black around the edges after i'm done but I need this postcard because I need to be able to see where to put the other layers. And the white is the only thing that's going to help me register the other layers on this stencil. Okay, so I've got a plausible Wonder Woman here, but there's two things that are wrong with this. One is that um, when I went in and did the flesh layer, I didn't hit it as much with the white as I needed to. So this was pure white, and this was supposed to be the flesh layer. And since I was painting on black, I should have uh, made this lighter. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. But I also think I'm gonna use the selective parts of the black layer and give them just a tiny bit of white so that we can uh, bring to light some of the features like the edge. Basically, we're not seeing her edges here and we want to see her edges a little bit better. So let's try those two things. The most important parts I want to hear, hit, hit here are just uh, on the underside with just a little bit of the outline and then um, maybe a little bit around the edge of the hair at the top, the edge of the head and the hair. Good, I see a little bit more of the outline there. I like it a little bit, but it also uh, gave me a couple of bridging problems that I don't want to solve right now. Okay, there's Wonder Woman on a black background using, again, like I said, only black and white paint and using these uh, stencils that all represent different colors. But you still, you see you get, um, in this example, you get um, five tones. Um, and this example, you get four tones with bringing in the background color. And in this one, you get, again, four tones bringing in the black background color. And um, apart for some bridging issues here where you see it looks like there's some cracking going on, um, I think this looks pretty good. I think I could fix the cracking, and I might spend just a, a minute on it. But, um, but I think I'm going to take a picture of it first because this is uh, coming out better than the red one. Okay, I think I'm ready for an easy one. Um, I think I'm gonna paint this uh, call box here on a red background for starters, and then I'll paint it on a black background and then maybe a gray background just to uh, show what the stencils can do um, with just the two colors, uh, black and white. Okay. Okay, not tri so tricky to tell what that's gonna be, but I think I'm gonna need some white in order to um, put it in place. Okay, what I did here is I added the white labels to the telephone box, but I also uh, added just a slight layer around the outside so that you can kind of see what's what, where the thing starts and ends. And you'll see when I pull this away that it helps a little bit, but I kind of screwed up. I screwed up right here where I added the extra big blob of white because I used the wrong cap and the wrong pressure. So um, don't do that. Okay. Um, 
this is not doing it for me. So I think I am actually going to use that red layer because even though the red brings the um, the red from the outside brings the detail to the inside, and now I see what it is, um, I still don't like it, and I want there to be a difference between the outside and the inside. I might even, you know, just for the fun of it, I might even make it green instead of red. Um, let's try it. Let's try darkening the red, deepening the red just a little bit first. So obviously this, the challenge here was to only use black and white cans. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to, um, I'm going to come to the surface I find, which was red. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to decorate it with this. So it looks like I didn't even do anything, right? Because you've just got the red on the outside and red on the inside still. It hardly looks like I did anything at all. But when I pull this away, um, you'll see that there's a very different effect. So you get, you definitely have a red background and you have kind of this weird halo around, which in retrospect, I wouldn't have done um, if I knew I was gonna put the red in. Um, and then you have the, the letters and the telephone, which you can't really see that well. This one, I might as well have just tossed. If I had these um, in the physical stencil, I would just cut these out and leave it white, whitish gray there and, and then try to have the telephone letters come out here completely. Okay, uh, I think that's it for the red layer. Um, like I said, that was easy, but the thing we needed to do was add a little bit. We needed to use that red layer again, even though we're painting on red to say, okay, here is where the call box is. Okay, next things we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the same call box on black and on gray. And uh, you'll see that we use different layers for different things. We are gonna use that white layer again. Uh, and we'll use both the red and the black layer each time. Uh, it's challenging to show you actually what's happening on black because these stencils just show up black in King Spray. So when I have my stencil here, it shows up black. So when I put it on top of black, you can't really see anything. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just light, have a slightly lighter shade of gray here or a slightly um, not quite as black shade here to, so that you'll be able to see when I put the stencils on like we did with uh, Wonder, Wonder Woman. And just so we can say the challenge is fair, I'm only going to use that shade, the, the shade that I just used on, um, on this layer when I do it. Okay, there we go. It's the black and white uh, paint challenge. And I think that what we have is a few examples of uh, Wonder Woman here that worked okay. Um, on uh, neutral surface, neutral surface, dark surface. Dark surfaces can be really difficult. White light surfaces are typically easy because often you eliminate the background of your stencil and replace it with a light color. Um, in this case, uh, we had a, we had a call box on a light background for our reference image and we made the call box on a dark background with the stencil. Again, that's not a problem because you don't have to paint around the edge of that stencil. You can just use the interior of that stencil to paint if you want to. And again, uh, on a neutral background, we again have the, the call box. You can kind of see it in red. If you if you look at it, you know it's supposed to be red. But um, it's true of the, the Wonder Woman bits too. You can, you can see the blue in the costume and the red in the costume if you you know what color it's supposed to be and that's because the values are showing it to us the the light and the dark is showing it to us instead of seeing seeing the color okay that's it uh pick the one you like and respond in the comments this is dave signing off from bay stencil <laughs>